Today's guest is a coach and the host of a podcast called Successful Solutions, where million dollar earners, Holocaust survivors, and many other guests talk about how to make action your greatest habit. Welcome to the show, Ian. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. You know, it's it's funny to like say what your own show is after a while, but then to hear somebody else say it, it's like, whoa, that sounded cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. But but you, you do you do, you know, a very wonderful and cool job. So whenever I introduce it, as in writing it down also sounds so cool. And I'm I'm so happy that you know you are doing what you are doing to impact the world, you know, with the messages and the wonderful podcast episodes that you've released so far. And also, you know, those conversations that you've engaged with people, you know, about habits and successful solutions. That's wonderful. It's so cool and so impactful. Thank you for what you do. Oh, it's so nice to hear that. I really appreciate that, Toby, really. Thank you. I would love also, you know, learn from your life journey a little bit first. Like, if, if it's okay with you, if you could share a little bit about your, your life experience, your life journey so far that made you who you are today, would that be okay? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. I'd love to. Yeah. So I think what I've noticed in my life is most people are smarter than me. Most people are more, more capable than I am. Um, and the funny thing is that they, in my viewpoint, they kind of rely on their skill sets of natural intelligence and natural ability to take them places. That's just something I, I have noticed. Um, because I, I am not a very gifted person. <laughs> like that's, that's kind of, I feel like the only, the one true gift I had was persistence and consistency. If I had a gift that was given to me, that was, that was the one. And I would say that is the one that has carried me the farthest beyond all of the other things that I would ever attribute to my life. Because, um, even from, before I reached my teen years, I was put on this drug called Ritalin. And I was given some setbacks that uh, my peers didn't have. Um, when I got put on the drug, I was not eating as much. Um, I was very zombie-like. I, I lost a lot of my emotions, quite literally. And I was starting to develop suicidal thoughts and um, not so much actions, but I was kind of like going in that direction, like, and we're talking about a, a 10 and 11 year old being on drugs and having these kinds of thoughts. And it was definitely the drugs that were influencing that. So it, it was kind of a not so great situation with my principal because my principal was a psychiatrist in the past. And she told my mother either put Ian on drugs or kick him out of the school. Those were my mother's options. And it wasn't so great for my mom because it was, um, she had I think three other adult figures also saying you should put Ian on drugs. It would be the best thing for him type of thing. And I was pretty against it even before I even knew much about drugs. Mm -hmm. So I got put on these drugs and I was on them for about three years. And the thing about those drugs is the damage was done after I got put onto them. You know, it wasn't like I could magically even after I got on them off yeah. of them, it wasn't like I could magically fix the, the damage it created because it would almost as seem and looked like I was on early forms of Alzheimer's, like very early, early, early stages of it, mm -hmm. because there's a specific movie I like to relate this to. It's called The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Mm -hmm. And and if you if you watch part of that movie, just specifically how he reacts, um, he starts to get snappy, um, very argumentative, um, very mean towards other people. Um, not being able to socialize, uh, very forgetful. I was having all of those things happen to me. And it, and it was it was confusing and it was very hard for me to deal with at the time because before I was a happy, outgoing, could make anybody laugh type of personality to being very quiet and not willing to talk with other people and not wanting to be around others and being very cut off from other people. So uh, the first thing I had to figure out is I, I said to myself, um, you know, I don't need to be on these drugs. I don't need them to make me be, be the way that they want me to be, because the whole reason why I was being put on the drugs is because I was I was acting out. You know, I was I was being I was being a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, I had too much energy and it was hard for me to pay attention to class. Like sounds like every other child that I've ever seen in class. Right. Yeah. <laughs> 
And so I, I went through this and it was this place of just kind of isolation in a sense. And I had to very early on say, okay, you know, I don't need the drugs to solve my, my, um, my patterns or anything like that. I need to focus on eating the right food because if I eat the right food, mm -hmm. then that'll control my energy levels because before I was eating like lots of sugar, sodas, candies and everything. Mm -hmm. So from a very early age, I said, you know, I need to change my eating habits. Mm -hmm. And so I started with that and I studied books on it and I found out what foods to eat and what foods not to eat based off of what these books are saying. Yeah. And that was the real start for me because mm -hmm. remember that I'm, I'm having conversations with people and I'm forgetting what they're saying within 15 seconds of what they're saying. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm getting mad at these people who are trying to talk and communicate with me. Mm -hmm. And I, I wasn't easy or friendly to get along with at this point. So there was definitely ups and downs where like at times I, I would get along with people, but it was, it was, it was, there were times where it happened. There was definitely times where it wouldn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> and so over the years, I also had to learn how to get along with others. Mm -hmm. I, I had this very natural skill set of being able to easily get along with others. But after being put on the drugs, I had to learn step by step, like literally, what do I say in a conversation? How do I get this person to open up to me? How do I get this person to like me a little bit more? Mm -hmm. How do I um, how do I get to the place where I can remember or if I can't remember what four questions can I put in my memory so that way, I'm not going to ask them the same question again. Mm -hmm. So I, I couldn't rely on natural conversation skills anymore. I had to memorize questions. And one of the first leading questions I always ask somebody else, and I have found this to be a tried and true type of question, this is something you want to write down, is where are you, where are you from? Are you originally from here is where I usually <laughs> like to start. Uh, and that yeah. is one of, it's a, it's a non-offensive question. And it Lee and everybody has always a different answer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Of course, that's true. Yeah. Except, except we are from the same place. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Some people are the same place, but but then the next question you can naturally ask them: What keeps you around, or why did you move here? Mm -hmm. So you you build questions off of like one thing that you can memorize, and then have it bleed, to have it continue off of that. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's that's very smart. Yeah, that's very very smart. And would you say would you say um, you've been able to fully recover from the effects the drugs had had on you? Yes. Yes. I've had. Um, I've I've gone to. I've gotten definitely away from psychiatry, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. I, I have I have found um, holistic approaches to solving my memory problems. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very developed in terms of my communication skills, as you, you're hearing me now, and. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, my ability to remember things is much higher. Everything in my life has really come to this, to this better point. I haven't had any suicidal thoughts for mm -hmm. about a year now. And that's yeah. a really good win for me because I had consistent suicidal thoughts for about 20 years, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was a, that was a consistent thing that I was always kind of battling and dealing with. And then after a certain point, I kind of, uh, was able to stop having them and, Emotionally, I'm doing much better. Spiritually, I'm doing much better. I've I've uh, figured out ways to raise my IQ just by coming becoming more literate. Uh, just looking up the definitions of words, it's made a huge, huge difference in my world. Thank you so much. I'm 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 so glad that you are making great progress already in your life, and I'm happy that you're, you're sharing this also. But if I may ask, um, what did you do to, to you know, when you were having all these suicidal thoughts and you know these challenges, what did you do at that moment to you know um, overcome them? And how would you say you you were able to progress from having them so much often back then to now not having them at all? I believe. Mm, yeah. So great question. Um, I don't like to use the word optimistic, but I think that's a generalized term that a lot of people can can think with. Mm. Um, but I would say that I would just focus on the positive things that I would get out of a situation. So I would I had all these negative suicidal thoughts for near 20 years. And the thing that I really walked away with that whole situation is a lot of is kind of just tolerating the situation. And just saying, okay, this this sucks. I don't enjoy this. I don't like this. Um, but I'm gonna find a way to get out of it. Mm -hmm. 
you know, like it's kind of like if you uh, think about climbing Mount Everest or something, it's this impossible hill to climb. You know, it's incredibly tall. Uh, it's very high in elevation. You need special equipment for it from as far as I know. And you, when you're in these depression modes and you're having these hard times that you're getting through in your mind, what you have to think of is that you're at the very bottom of Mount Everest. You're, you're probably below Mount Everest. You're in a ditch somewhere and you're stuck, you know, and the thing about suicidal thoughts and depression and anxiety is no one can really force you out of that ditch. No one can force you to kind of get out of that anxiety that if you're going to not try to handle it, it'll kind of take over at times. Mm -hmm. And so what you have to do is step by step, you have to get outside quite literally and start walking around. And in, in this relation that I'm making to Mount Everest, you have to start climbing the mountain. Mm -hmm. you, you have to start saying, okay, how can I improve my life? What is one thing that I can work on? And it's only through taking your negative energy and applying it towards something more positive mm -hmm. that someone will be able to make a lasting change. And that's, if you really look at all my life experiences, that's all I've really done. I've, I've taken these negative things in my life and I have, I have found positive ways to put my energy in a good direction. So now instead of, uh, having these suicidal thoughts, whenever I have start having a suicidal thought, whenever I start having anxiety for mm. this, when I, when this was going on and I still do this just out of, um, out of habit now for when this happens. But when I start feeling um, depressed or shut down or something like that, I go for a walk, oh, you know, I, I don't, I don't sit there and, and ha be, be afraid. I, I go for, I go for a walk mm. and I, Sometimes I walk for 20 minutes. Sometimes I walk for 30 minutes. Sometimes I walk for 10 minutes, but I, I have always noticed that when I've, I'm in anxiety and I'm stressed out um, and I go for a walk and I start doing, taking big, deep breaths, mm. I notice that my, uh, my anxiety goes away. The thoughts start to disappear just enough, just enough so that I can kind of continue going about my day. And, and I don't let those thoughts uh, take over my life as much, you know, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to be in control. I'm not letting my thoughts take control. If you are a professional looking at the European startup scene, Germany is a place you cannot miss. Fortunately for you, there is startuprad.io, the authority on German startups. This English only podcast brings you fresh interviews each week. Most likely you have never heard or read anything on these startups before in English, but you will in the future. Be ahead of the curve and subscribe to StartupRad.eo podcast or check for the StartupRad.eo internet radio station. Check your Alexa for the StartupRad.eo skill as well. Oh, that's good. Yes, that's so wonderful. And it, it, it's so, I mean, so relatable because I know, I know the, the wonders that taking walks, you know, does on you. Like, you know, going on walks and it helps you to process your thoughts properly. It helps you to divert your your yourself from these negative thoughts into something else. Like you get to see nature and maybe, you know, like you said, do some um, breath work, for example, and that way you are able to improve your situation at that moment. Yes, that's so good. Yes, I, will, I mean, that's one habit I, I could um, encourage everyone to, you know, you know, start because it's something that really, really does help physically, emotionally, mentally. It helps maybe spiritually too because you could start speaking, you know, with God, for example, on the way and, you know, speaking with your inner self too and, yeah, just being aligned basically in, in every way. Yeah, that's so good. Yes. So um, I would just love to know, you know, um, so you... You, you said this question that you said um, you always ask people where they come from, for example. Uh, and I know you, you are born and raised in Montana, but then you journeyed to Florida. Can you share this you know, life journey part with me? Like what made you leave Montana to, to um, Florida and then to study? You, I think you, you studied welding. And you became a welder and then, you know, you, you, you were homeless at some point and now you are... No, no longer homeless. <laughs> so can you can you just you know share this um you know life path that you went on? What were some mistakes you made that you know that you, we, we that you love to share with us that we, you know we can also avoid? And what are you know some peculiar things, life lessons that you gained in this journey that you went on, or that you are on also? 
Yeah, no, Toby, I just have to say, I really admire your ability to know your your guest and being able to say all those things at once. I've never had anybody do that. So <laughs> I'm I'm thoroughly impressed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, you know, it, it all started in Montana. I, I was born and raised there. I somehow managed to get through high school. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and that was a good that was a really good first step. And um, mm-hmm. as soon as I finished high school, I wanted to get out of the state. And when uh, when I finished high school there, I went out to Utah for a bit, you know, and then I went to trade school there and I learned how to how to lay some bricks and stuff like that. And then after I finished uh, with Utah, I went down to Colorado to try to find some more bricklaying education mm-hmm. and I couldn't find any bricklaying jobs available at the moment. So I was in downtown Denver in the city Mm. and I went to the specific company. I actually had to track down this specific company to apply for this job because I saw this construction building. I saw this, this, uh, place they were doing construction and I, they told me the address was downtown and stuff like that. So I had to go, this was a whole process. This took literally days for me to do this. Right. (laughs) Um, I went down to the main office in the city. I applied there and right next to, uh, bricklaying as far as a job, they had welder right underneath it. And I was like, huh, you know, and I, I had welding experience from high school. I had welded, uh, I think I took three semesters worth of classes for welding. So it was something I was a lot more familiar with. I only did about a year's worth of, of bricklaying and I did uh, all that time with welding. So I, I did both those applications, but Mm. really doing that application just showed me that I was like, Oh, I can also decide to do welding. So I, uh, I looked it up and I found out that I could go into the iron workers, which is a construction trade, which has welding involved with it, Mm. but it is really revolved around making a building, the, the construction, the skyscrapers and stuff, the, the very inner workings of that building is iron working. Mm. So I went into iron working and I did that for about a year. And that was an incredible experience that I will always remember. It was probably one of the most impactful times of my life because I was, I worked in restaurants and I worked on a farm and stuff like that. But when you work construction, you really develop what's everyone kind of knows as common sense. Mm -hmm. Um, But really what common sense means, and we're getting more into the definitions here is you're able to observe something, you're able to see it and understand it, and then you know what to do afterwards. Um, For example, I was on a job uh, yesterday and I was in a position where I was, I, I still operate a forklift to this day. And there was this driver that was needed to drop off some pallets and I had the forklift and he needed a pallet jack and I was sitting there with the pallet jack and the forklift ready to put it onto his truck. Mm -hmm. And I I saw him to the left in his truck and he was not driving forward. And I was looking at him and he was looking at me and we were, I was a little confused. I was like, why isn't he driving forward? I don't, I don't get it. And And instead of going over and talking to him, I just observed and I noticed there was another truck on the right side and I I was like, okay, that, that truck might be there. Usually there's trucks over there though. So I don't see why that would stop or and hit it, prevent him from moving. And then I got off the forklift. I looked far enough over and I was like, Oh, the forklift's practically in the middle of the road, hmm. like to a certain degree, more than I thought it was. Yeah. And so I then knew what I needed to do. It was no longer about waiting for this truck to, put this forklift on the back of his vehicle. It was more about getting these packages and putting them on this other vehicle. Mm -hmm. So going, and and then I started to do that. And as soon as, and then I helped that truck get out of the way. And then this truck was able to pull forward. And then I put the forklift on there and it Mm -hmm. went really smoothly. So, yeah, so it's, that's where, that's kind of common sense. That's just an example of it. Mm -hmm. Um, but ironworking really taught me common sense to a very high level that I ever had before. There's much, there's other people who are much better at this than I am. Like once again, I'm, I will never admit to being the brightest star, but I'm, I'm definitely someone who, excuse me, 
works on it mm. and and is going towards that going towards the top of the mountain. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite posts that I saw was a was a guy in crutches and he's on a running track and he has these crutches and he's going and he he's he has crutches and a broken leg it looks like and he's on the track and he's trying he's putting in the effort to like go down the track mm-hmm. and his friends are on the grass and they're hanging out and they're having fun and they're joking around or something like that and the post said at the top that it doesn't matter where you're at but it matters how hard you're trying mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and seeing that guy with the crutches and the broken leg it just it just made so much sense to me because i have always felt like that person i have always i have always felt like the underdog i have always felt like i was the kid in the crutches Mm -hmm. and i i saw these other other people who were way more talented and way more gifted than me um but i just kept going you know so i i went through a year's worth of construction with the ironworking and um i almost uh, got very severely injured a few times. <laughs> and, uh, and then I decided to get out of the iron workers, um, after I had a shoulder surgery mm-hmm. done. And, um, after, after that, I mean, um, you, you had mentioned this homeless thing that I went through and I, yes. I was homeless, uh, before I, uh, let me backtrack a little bit. So, Um, when I left Montana, I spent about six months in Colorado, um, before I went out to Utah Mm -hmm. and I was being homeless out there and I was being homeless around the winter time. And, uh, it was uh, really cold. And that was kind of, I would say the start of having to be what I would call resourceful. Once again, kind of common sense stuff where you observe things and you're like, Oh, I need a solution. What's the right solution? Mm -hmm. Uh, because there was times I was sleeping outside in like 30 degree weather and I I needed warm materials to, to not like be super cold, you know? So, uh, I, there was this item called the free box in town. You could take whatever you wanted out of there. So it was at that moment where I was, I really had to think on my feet. I mean, I, I grew up and I, I had a lot of stuff taken care of for me, like I'm sure a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. And, um, that was the first, that was one of the first times I really had to think on my feet and say like, okay, where do I go to get supplies to stay warm? Like, what do I do? Do I have to go beg for money? Do I have to go, uh, find something up the street? Do I do like, do I have to go to a certain location? And, um, fortunately there was this free box. And, uh, from, from that point on, you know, I just really had to figure out how to get through those times. And I just, I also remember very specific memories of people saying, complete strangers, mind you, someone who's never met me before looking at me mm-hmm. and saying, uh, you look hungry. And that's, that's not really a good sign. I mean, I, 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 I was losing, I'm not sure if I was really like, I was thinning though. I was, I was becoming thinner. I was losing weight. Mm. It looked like, you know, it was like my body was kind of eating itself. <laughs> it's, mm. it's probably not the, the, probably one of the, not not the nicest ways. Yeah. 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 So, so, uh, yeah, it was super cold and I was very hungry <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and honestly, I got by by smoking cigarettes at times, you know, I, I, this, I don't know if people would ever want to hear this, but, um, I remember going around town at night and, and digging up, um, cigarettes out of, out of the ashtray, uh, that other people had smoked. I'd, I'd find, uh, more whole cigarettes and, um, and I'd smoke them because, uh, cigarettes reduce your hunger cravings. And I was so hungry that I, I needed to find some way that I wasn't going to feel the pain from, from, uh, not eating. Yeah. So that was one of the solutions I had <laughs> to, uh, yeah. to get out of, um, to get out of feeling hungry. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I go through being homeless for about six months. I go out to, to Utah and then I go out to Colorado and, and life improves pretty dramatically for me there. Like I, I, I have a stable job. I'm, I'm living in a, I, I have a nice, I have a, a stable place to stay. Mm. And, uh, and then I get involved with the trades. That was a really big help for me. And, um, and then after I had, I I had also done about five years, five or six years worth of service of, uh, volunteer work Mm -hmm. in Colorado as well. I, I helped sometimes up to like 40 hours a week, uh, with, with volunteer service. So I was working a full job doing volunteer service and the volunteer service really helped me out because, um, the group I was a part of was pretty good. They, they said, 
you know, stay away from drugs. Um, like, you know, you can drink, but make sure you just do it at certain times. Mm. And that was just enough because I grew up in a culture where it was okay to drink. It was okay to smoke. It's in fact, it's encouraged. <laughs> and, um, being in that group really helped me out because it, it showed me a moral road to say, okay, you know, you can do that stuff, but it, you know, it's not the best thing for you. And so, um, I continue to work on my eating habits and I stopped drinking and I stopped smoking and I stopped doing drugs. Um, all around the time I found that volunteer work because it was like the, the group itself had this kind of a uh, moral presence that said, you know, we just don't do certain things here. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, you know, I'm, I can be on board with that. And, yeah. and being in the trades helped too, because they, they drug test you. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and if you, if you show up and you have drugs in your system and you get hurt on the job, which actually happened one time, um, then you get, uh, sent to the, I don't know if it's the emergency room, but you get taken care of. And if you show up positive for, for, um, having drugs in your system, then you don't get the, uh, they won't really pay for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I also decided to quit doing drugs before I got involved with that group, but getting That's involved with that group really helped me out. And then, um, so I lived in Colorado for about seven years. And then I moved out to Florida after I, uh, I kind of was wrapping things up and I was just kind of done with winter time and I was wanting to move on and, and skateboarding is very prevalent here in Florida. <laughs> I live next to a place that has a world, literally worldwide competitions every single year. Mm -hmm. And, um, from when I moved out to Florida, I was able to, uh, get my life more together. You know, I, I found more stable places to live. I, I found more stable jobs to have. And then the, the big moment came where, um, I got back involved with welding and I did that for about a year. I took another, I think a year's worth of classes. I also did an apprenticeship mm -hmm. where, um, I was learning how to do not the construction side of things, but it, it's, a uh, kind of like before they send all the materials out for the iron workers to, to put all the stuff together. Mm -hmm. Um, I was working in, in those shops and then, um, and then one thing led to another, I bought my, my car and then I ended up buying a house. And wow. so, yeah, I, I literally went from being homeless 10 years, 10 years prior or 11 years prior to making all these massive changes where I stopped doing drugs. I stopped drinking. I stopped smoking. I got involved with the right people mm -hmm. and I started to make slightly better decisions and it, over a 10 year time frame, And then my, my better decisions turned into better decisions, which turned into the best decisions. And now I see some of those people who have those natural advantages, who are smarter than me, who, who have their, who, who have more potential than I do, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I see that because of the decisions I've made, I'm in, and I, and I, I'm, I'm just trying to be humble about this, but I've noticed that my life is going in a, in a really good direction. And I see where they're at and I'm like, wow, like I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I actually have my skill set of just being consistent and persistent hmm. over these natural advantages, you know, because there's something about, uh, working for something you have to get, you know, hmm. because, um, it makes it more worthwhile in a way. It makes you really think like, how do I, how do I get this thing that I'm after? I, I'm not being given it. I don't have the skill sets for it. I'm not, I'm not gifted. I have to figure out how to do this. And I have to put my, I have to learn and I have to read the right books to understand the right information to be able to do this. Yes. Yeah. You know, yes. I mean, for yeah. example, like, um, Toby, I'm sure you, you are a very good podcaster. Um, but I'm sure when you started podcasting, it, it mm. wasn't like something that was super easy for you or, no. um, it wasn't something that were just like, here, I, this other person was like, I will show you the way. Yeah. And it, and it's, it's, a uh, it's through our, our determination and our skill sets that, that really get us to this, this next peak of performance and this next level that, that we can attain. And that's one of the biggest things that I would I would say as a, a tip to write down is always strive to be the best that you can be because one day you're going to wake up and, and realize how far you've really come. You're going to realize that you climbed Mount Everest mm -hmm. and that you're at this new level and that you're at this new high of life and that you can achieve these great things, but you, you have to push yourself and you have to try mm -hmm. and it's not just going to be given to you. Um, I mean, sometimes it will, sometimes life is nice to you. Sometimes it's not. <laughs> so 
if you can take these natural advantages that some people that some things are given to you and and combine them with your own willpower i think michael jordan is an excellent example of this because he he had a real gift for playing basketball mm -hmm. and the the one best thing that happened to him is i think it was his coach in his senior year of of high school or his junior year of high school cut him removed him from the team yeah. and he made him he he made michael jordan show up like every day to, to practice, to join on the team for senior year. Mm -hmm. And that's really where his career was headed. And, and that from there, he was able to just become one of history's greatest basketball players, as far as I can tell. Wow, that, that's so beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing, you know, these life paths. And, you know, from, from the story you shared right now, you made mention of it again, that you, 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 you said you were not like the, the best or the, the brightest, but you were persistent and consistent. So can you share with us, like, how can we be persistent and consistent in our journey of life? Are there like some tips you could share with us in this regards? Mm, that's a great, great question. Um, the way to stay persistent and consistent is to take the things that you're working on and keep them around you. Mm. So if you want to focus on being a guitar player, find that guitar and put it in your room or put it in your environment, put it in a place that you're going to see it every day. Mm. You know, if, if you want to be better at writing, uh, get a pen and paper and bring it around with you everywhere you go and make sure you write a little bit every day. Mm. Um, and that's one of the best things that you can do. I mean, there is Jerry Seinfeld who is a, who has done great work. And the one thing that he does is he writes jokes. He's a great comedian and he writes his jokes down every single day. It's not like he uses all of his jokes or anything like that, but he consistently writes and he consistently writes jokes. And Chris Rock, who is a fam another famous comedian, um, he goes to hundreds of these smaller, uh, I'm not sure if there would be bars, but comedy places where he can perform his routines and he will go and practice new routines consistently at these places until he, he really gets it down. So it's about showing up on a regular basis, you know, show up every day if you can, even if it's for less than 30 seconds, just show up every single day. And that will be the biggest thing that will launch you from not being able to achieve any goal you have or get to where you want to in life to being able to get there. Because one thing we have to look at is anyone who competes in the Olympics, anyone who is trying to perform in the NBA or the, the like any, any professional, professional sports or anything, anyone trying to get a job, Everyone's trying to win. Everyone's trying to accomplish that thing. Mm. But the thing that sets you apart is your, your habits and your goals and, mm. and being able to consistently and persistently work on these things. Mm. So the, the goal of being the, the gold medal winner doesn't really matter anymore because everyone's trying to get there. Mm -hmm. So it, it doesn't matter if, if, if you're competing against all these people and that person, if you have these natural skill sets, sure, you, you'll get somewhere. But if you're pushing yourself, striving and performing and making yourself go through the, the tough work to figure out how to get through these things, yeah. then you're going to have another level that other people can't reach. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, this happened with a, a famous swimmer that won several gold medals where he practiced and rehearsed winning the Olympic gold medal so many times mentally in his head. Um, and that, that when he finally won, it wasn't that big of a deal to him. It was more or less rehearsal. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like he did some miraculous feat. It was as though he had been doing the same actions every single day to get him to perform at that new level. Mm -hmm. And the great thing about it was he practiced to make sure that he could swim if his goggles fogged up. He, he made sure that if, if something was wrong with his body or if there was something alternative going on, that those things wouldn't phase him. And actually, when he won the gold medal for in the Olympics, his goggles did fog up. He did have that problem, but it didn't phase him because he was prepared for it. Mm -hmm. So when you're going to be consistent, persistent towards something, I would just say showing up every day is the number one thing that you can do. And life gets in the way sometimes. Don't get me wrong. I mean... 
there, there's give yourself some grace and say like, okay, I can, you know, there's, there's going to be those days where life gets in the way and I have to skip a day. And that happens, you know, Yes. but the real goal is to stay, do it every, every day that you possibly can do it. You know, and, and like mm. I said, even if it's for 30 seconds, yeah. you know, you have 24 hours in the, in the day, who knows? Uh, that's, that's a lot of seconds. Mm-hmm. And if you can just spare 30 of them for doing something like that, that's, that's how I'm writing a book right now. Sometimes I write for less than a minute on my book. Mm. You know, sometimes I spend like 20 minutes on it a day, mm. but it's not so much about how much I write. It's that I write every yeah. day. Yes. And, and that's what you get out of, out of this. I mean, um, another thing I would say is like, I feel like I'm in, I'm in really good shape for who I am. Like I, I see, I see some of the, like, we, I just see people and I see the shape they're in. And, and sometimes they, they kind of like, I'm not able to lose weight or I don't know how to do, to do that type of thing. Um, and some people say I work out a lot, but I don't think it matters to make yourself work out for 40 minutes every single day. If you only do it for two weeks, Mm. I do Mm. think it matters if you can make yourself work out for a minute every day Mm. and do that for five years. Mm. Yes. That compound effect uh, comes into play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's exactly it. And you can see that with money too. Money, the, the compound effect is it, it continues to grow with time and, that's how you get through some of those more difficulties that other people may experience is you're going to hit these walls. You're going to hit these plateaus. You're going to hit these things that like, Oh, I can't get around this. Mm. And when you show up for a little bit every day, you start to figure out how to get around those things. Yes. There was a great, great uh, quote. Somebody said the other day, life is an obstacle. It's not a journey. I mean, you, you life is a journey, but it's, it's full of obstacles. And if you mm. see life more as an obstacle, mm. then I think that's a better mindset to live off of because it, it's true in my, in my viewpoint, you're going to have these things that get in your way. You're, you're going to have these bad days. You're not going to be motivated all the time. Yeah. And the real thing is, this is not about being motivated. It's about being consistent. You have to be consistent on your journey. And that's, that's the same way you, you form good habits. I believe like being consistent, like you said, you know, working out every day, you, you, you could start at, you could start it as a challenge, but when you continue, you know, continue doing it every day, it becomes a habit. It becomes something that you just do naturally. It comes natural to you. Like you made mention of, you know, of Michael Jordan, for example. Then playing basketball to him becomes like a normal, natural thing. Yes. After, you know, years of training and years of being, uh, you know, being challenged with it, basically. Yeah. Yes. And that's why, that's why I love us talk about your, your podcast. And you have this wonderful podcast called Soulful Solutions. And you also have, a, you also have an, an e-book also that also discusses or talks about, you know, habits also. So can you, like, tell us more about your podcast, tell us more about your e-book also that's titled Soulful Solutions? Yeah, sorry, Successful Solutions. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so... Successful Solutions is my podcast, and I really like it because the stories I get on there, I mean, I'll, I'll do several interviews, but it, it'll take me a few interviews to find a good one, and those are the ones I keep on there. Mm. And those interviews are literally life-changing stories that have totally impacted people's lives. I mean, there is one story about a guy named Jimmy Roenick, who I'm doing a second interview with on Sunday, and this man weighed around 415 pounds, like a very heavy set man, like literally on his deathbed with a child and did not have a good future ahead of him at all. Like the doctor's literally telling him you're going to die this year if you don't change something. Hmm. And, um, and he was smoking and he was drinking and he was doing drugs and he was a pretty bad addict, you know? Hmm. And the day that he was sent to the hospital to to basically not die (laughs) because he fainted when he was trying to take his daughter to the zoo. Mm -hmm. Um, The day that he went to the hospital, they was probably one of the best days of his life for him. Long-term speaking for sure. Short term. It probably wasn't so great, (laughs) Uh, but long-term he was able to quit smoking that day because the Mm -hmm. doc, because they gave him patches and they were basically like, you have to, or you're not going to be around for too much longer. And he's like, I got a daughter and I have these responsibilities that I have to tend to. So, he took it upon himself mm. to make a change. 
And he, on this episode that he talks about his journey that went over 10 years, wow. you know, it was not a overnight thing. He had to lose pound by pound by pound. Mm. And you, there, you see a picture of a man and it's like, if you've ever seen a couch, it's like he, his whole body took the, took the couch hmm. up. Like he was a big guy. Yeah. And, uh, one of the first things he ended up doing was that really helped him out other than like stop eating as much. That's what he said for the first like three or four years, he just had to, had to just not eat as much mm -hmm. is, uh, he was listening to Tony Robbins. And for the first time he was starting to hear things like you can do it. And I believe in you. And you can accomplish things. And it was those little, little things. It was those little wins, you know, just listening to the right things and, and getting the right information that he was able to say like, you know, I, I, I can do this, you know, because that's kind of what we need at times. We just need to hear like, I believe in you and you can do it. Mm -hmm. Um, because the truth is you can, <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. you just have to, uh, get past these considerations that, mm -hmm. that we all have. And, um, now, if we look at Jimmy's life, he's in literally the best shape of his life that he's ever been in, and he can outwork people who are younger than him. You know, he's more physically fit than people who are younger than him, and he's in amazing shape, and he's, yeah, yeah, so get this. When he went to the hospital that day, he walked less than, like, two blocks mm -hmm. when he was that weight, and... 10 years later, he can practically run like 30 miles now in a day. Ah, that's great progress. So it's, yeah, it mm -hmm. just massive amounts of progress. So mm -hmm. that's just one story on my podcast and my ebook over at uh, iantolson.com gives you that episode and basic insights about his life of how he changed and how mm -hmm. it can help others too. Mm -hmm. I've found it to be very helpful for myself because I learned a lot from Jimmy Mm -hmm. And I feel that it can help other people out too. So if anybody, if anybody wants that, it's totally free over at uh, iantolson.com. And I'm, I'm very happy to share it with others and, and even just have the material myself. Cause I'm like, wow, I feel so gifted. I feel so fortunate that I, I even know this information, you know, it's a, it's a huge blessing. I think it could form your life or you could get some things from that story also that could help you improve your life also. Yeah. That's wonderful. I'm going to place the link to your website in the show notes of this episode. So I encourage everyone who is listening to just click on the link or copy the link and you no know, download the ebook or even subscribe to your newsletter. You have a, a form where we could fill, you know, names and email address to be contacted. Yeah, I mean, to you reach out to people that fill up the forms on your website. Yeah, yeah, over at Ian told, Yeah, when they go over to the website, there'll be a place for their name and email address, and mm -hmm. they're gonna they'll get a tip right on the website itself, a secret tip, mm -hmm. and then they can have the opportunity to uh, get the ebook and excuse me, um, read the uh, or listen to the uh, podcast episode. Podcast well. episode. Yeah, that's good. Thank you so much for that. So, um, what, what you know, I also know you you have coaching services or coaching sessions that you have with people. So, what's the best way to like connect with you to work with you? Maybe you know take part of your coaching sessions also. What's the best way to do that? Yeah, you know, um, I'm starting to do group coaching at this point, and mm. it's really fun because it's uh, it's basically like I'm going to be recording episode. It's going to be a recorded episode. Uh -huh. And so they can get my group if they just go over to the website um, and just email me and say, hey, I want to get involved with that. You can also find me on Facebook mm -hmm. um, just under my name. And uh, if you reach out to me, I'll get you, you involved in my in my group chat. And then you'll be included to be a part of these podcast episodes. And what it is, is we just meet once a month and we talk about a main core subject that can help somebody out. Or we bring up a topic that will also be good for other people to learn from. So mm -hmm. regardless, you're going to get a lot of information that will help them. Mm -hmm. And we, I like to keep things pretty simple, honestly. I, I like to keep things nice and easy so that way you can learn over time because nothing's going to happen overnight. In fact, I think a lot of big successes that people have in their life take time, and I feel like if you just show up and you can be the person you are and just work for that person that can be better tomorrow, then you're a, you're ahead of the game, in my opinion. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. Yes. So what would you love to share? What would you love to share as a closing remark? Like what advice will you give someone out there who is going through a very tough situation in life and who is trying to, you know, 
become a better person or live a better version of their life right now? What would you tell that person? You know, I, I would tell that person who's working for that better, that better place in their life that it is out there. You can do it. It's possible. Mm-hmm. And if you're at a point where maybe things are super tough for you and you're listening to this and you're like, I just have to get to my next day. Cause mm-hmm. I understand how that is too. Mm-hmm. Just push through those days. I know they, I know they're difficult. Yeah. Um, and if you're someone who is on top of the world and you're like, man, that's great. I'm glad you, I don't have to deal with that type of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> then, um, I would also give you the same advice and say like, you can always push yourself to be at this next level. Mm. You know, if, if you take, uh, if, if you take an airplane and move it, I believe it's like 30 degrees to like the left or to the right. Mm-hmm. If, if it's going from, let's say California up to New York, you're going to land like four States over. If you go to the left and four States over, if you go to the right. So those 30 degree changes, those 1% changes, those little, those little things that you look at your day and you say, you know, what can I improve? Mm. What can I change? What can I make a little bit better? Mm. You know, use those thoughts because everybody, we, we all have them at times, you know, maybe not procrastinate just a little bit more, you know, how can I make it easier for me to do those things that'll get me closer to getting a completed project? then that's the type of information I would give someone. And if, if you just even did that throughout your entire life, how can I improve a little bit? How can I improve a little bit? Yeah. Those are the things. Oh, and that and learn. If you can learn a little bit and improve a little bit, you're going to be ahead of the game. Oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you so much for sharing your story. And thank you so much for sharing so much insight, you know, and, and uh, from your experience also, and, you know, from the wonderful podcast that you have and the ebook that you have out there to impact people's life. Thank you so much for the awesome work that you do. I appreciate it. Hey, yeah. Toby, my pleasure. I'm, I'm very excited to be here. I'm really glad we were able to connect because I've really enjoyed every conversation we've had and I definitely like being around you. So I'm, uh, thank you for your time on here. Wow. You made it to the very end of this episode. Thank you so much for listening. I'm grateful for your time, your love, and your contributions. Subscribe, like, review, and share this podcast. God bless you. Bye.